Telemetry data show that the feather moved even though we know from the cockpit image recording that neither pilot had deployed the feather. However, the cockpit video did show that the co-pilot had unlocked the feather just after point eight Mach. Per the test card, the co-pilot was to unlock the feather when Spaceship Two reached a speed of 1.4 Mach. This was to allow the vehicle time to transition through the transonic region. Since the feather was unlocked in the transonic region, aerodynamic and inertial loads imposed on the feather flap assembly overcame the feather actuators, and the feather extended uncommanded, causing the catastrophic structural failure. Range instrumentation radar located on Edwards Air Force Base tracked White Knight 2 with Spaceship 2 attached and Spaceship 2 itself following its release from White Knight 2 until the impact of Spaceship 2's main oxidizer tank and wings with the ground. The telemetry data ended during the breakup. During the breakup sequence, the pilot was thrown from the vehicle while still restrained in his seat. During his descent to the ground, the pilot released himself from his seat and his parachute deployed automatically. The pilot's seat and parachute were found separately. The top middle of the slide shows where the left and right tail booms landed and the cockpit and nose and the rocket motor were located towards the bottom left of the slide. Scaled composites did not emphasize human factors in the design, operational procedures, simulator training, or hazard analysis for Spaceship Two. During the design of Spaceship Two, Scale did not consider the possibility that a pilot would un unlock the feather before 1.4 Mach, and as such, no safeguards were built into the feather system design to prevent this. Although Spaceship Two program personnel said they were aware that unlocking the feather during transonic flight would be catastrophic, there was no warning, caution, or limitation in the Spaceship Two pilot operating handbook or on the PFO4 test card that specified this risk. The only documented discussions about the loads on Spaceship Two's tail occurred more than three years before the accident in an email and a PowerPoint presentation. AST was also not informed of this hazard. In addition, human factors was not fully considered in Spaceship Two training as the simulator did not replicate the vibration and loads, nor did pilots train wearing the same flight gear that they were expected to wear during actual flights in the vehicle. Finally, SCALE's hazard analysis did not consider pilot-induced hazards that could pose a, p a risk to public safety. This area will be discussed more in Mr. Hoff's presentation. By not considering unlocking early in the boost phase as a potential cause of an uncommanded feather extension, SCALE missed opportunities to identify design and or operational factors that could have mitigated the catastrophic consequences of this single human error. <laughs> 